I'll show you how to bind events to methods. For example, when you press the Enter key on the keyboard, TKEnter can run a method that you specify. I'll also show you how to get the name of a sequence just by typing on your keyboard. Join me as we look at event binding in TKEnter. Hi, my name is Jobin and I'm an open source developer. My channel is called Jobin Pi and it's all about Python and Linux. Welcome to Jobin Pi. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to bind events to methods. So for example, here I have an entry widget. When I press the enter key on the keyboard, I wanted to do something. I wanted to run a method in my Python code. So to do that, I have to bind the enter key on this entry widget to a method that I'll have to define myself. So I'll show you an example. So here I have some existing code that will essentially just create this window. I'm not going to go over, you know, this code here because it's uh, some fairly standard stuff. You know, I'm creating frames, labels, and buttons. But the part I want to focus on is specifically the entry widget. So this one here, or where I can, where I can type stuff. So right now, if I press the Enter key, which I'm doing now on my keyboard, nothing's happening. I wanted to display something in the console down here. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to say, and I'm in, I'm in the uh, init constructor, the init method of my class. So here I'm going to say self.entry user input, which is the name of my entry widget. It's a TTK entry. Then I'm going to say bind and then I'm going to put an angled bracket, type in the word return with a capital R, and then close with another angled bracket. And here after it, I'm going to specify the name of the method that I want it to run. So self.onReturnPressed. Okay, so now we need to define that method. So on return pressed and it's going to automatically pass in an event so we need to specify that here in our parameter and here i'm just going to print return was pressed which will show up down here okay so let's just try this and see what happens okay so i'm just going to press the return key or the enter key on my keyboard on a count of three, one, two, three. And there it is. So it says return was pressed, so that obviously worked. But what if I wanted to run another method, like a second method, when the return key is pressed? Not just, not just this one, but I want another one to run. So let's define another method. I'll say on return pressed Two. and it's going to pass in an event and I'm going to write here another return or maybe I'll just simplify it. The, the very first one I'll change it to first return and the second one I'm just going to call second return I'll have it print second return on the second one so essentially whenever the return key is pressed on the keyboard I, I wanted to not just run this, I wanted to also run this method as well. So how would I do that? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is we'll type in self.entryUserInput.bind and then we'll put return and then self.onReturnPressed number two. So now we have both of them binded to return. Oh, there's an angled bracket missing like that. There we go. So let's try that and see what it does. Okay, so if I try that, I'm gonna press the enter key on the keyboard on a count of three. One, two, three. 
So we can see that it ran the second method. So it ran this one, but it didn't run the first one. And the reason is when I defined this, it overwrote the first binding. So it didn't add a second binding to return. Instead, it removed this binding and it replaced it with this one. So it's obviously still not doing what, what I'm expecting. So in a case like this, in the very second binding, we need to add something else so that this doesn't get removed. Here we say add equal and then a plus sign as a string. So let's try that now. And then I'm going to press the enter key on account of three. One, two, three. Yeah, so now it works. We have both methods running when the enter key on the keyboard is pressed. We have first return and second return. So just remember to add this parameter, add equal and then a plus sign as a string if you would like the same binding to run two separate methods or, or two separate functions. Uh, the reason why my, my console here is, is tabbing in this section, I think it's a, it's a bug in, in my IDE that I'm using. My IDE just got updated to a new version and ever since the new version, it started doing this. So don't mind the, uh, the tabs that it's showing here. Uh, on yours, it's probably just going to show first return and second return on separate lines without a tab appearing here. So I'm going to show you something else. So let's say if I don't know what the action word is that I need to use for a specific key. So for example, the string angled bracket and then return like that. So this return key is used for the return key on the keyboard um, or the enter key on the keyboard that's above the shift button. But there is another enter key on the far right of the keyboard on the numpad. Um, for th this one won't register the other enter key on the keyboard. So how do I find out what the name of the other enter key is? Like, what do I need to put there? It's obviously not return. Um, so what is it exactly? So there's a way to find out here. I'm going to say self dot entry user input dot bind. And here I'm going to put angle bracket key release and close the angle bracket. So capital K, capital R. And then I'm going to specify a method here, self.onKeyReleased. On key released, and it's going to pass in an event. And here I'm going to print key released, just so we can make sure that it works. Okay, so I'm going to Press the enter key on the keyboard on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, so we obviously can see that it works. If I type in T E S T, so test, and we can see that it runs multiple times. So, so again, how do I find out what the name of that action key is for the enter key on the right side of the keyboard? So, or, or any key on the keyboard for that matter. So what I can do is here, I can say print event dot key sim. And if I run this again, I'm going to press the enter key that's above the shift key. You know, just the normal one on the count of three, one, two, three. Okay. So it says return, which is what we already know. That's the, the, the word return with a capital R. What about the other enter key? I'm going to, Press that on the keyboard too. Let's see what we get. KP underscore enter. So that's what we need to use for the enter key that's on the right side of the keyboard where the numpad is. So we can use event.keysim to find out what word we need to put in here in the bind method. So this will save us from having to, uh, to do a search on the internet to find out what to actually put. Um, because here TK enter, 
uh, can can tell us just by running this method. And let's try some other keys. Let's let's try the left shift key on the keyboard. Let's see what that gives us. Shift underscore L. And the right shift key, I'm guessing it's going to be shift underscore R. Yep, it is. What about the space bar? It's just space and the backspace is backspace, capital B, capital S. So event.keysim is very handy. It's very useful to finding out what word to, to use in the bind method when you want to use a specific key on the keyboard. So here I'm going to put in kp underscore enter and I'm going to change the name of this method on right enter key pressed and I'm going to use that method there print right enter key was pressed okay now let's just make sure that works on a count of three, one, two, three. Yep, and it works. Okay, so I'll show you something else. What if I wanted all my TTK entry widgets to use the same methods? So if I had five entry widgets, I would have to copy this so that I would have five bindings for all those various entry widgets you know, entry username, uh, here, entry password, and they would all be for the same binding. So there's an easier way to do this. You can use any widget that has a bind method. And here for this example, I'm just gonna use self.entryuserinput.bind underscore class. And here we specify the name of the class. So for TTK entries, it's T, entry capital T capital E and here we'll specify which key to associate with so here I'm going to put kp underscore enter so it's the right enter key on the keyboard and I want it to run self dot on right enter key pressed okay so now what this means that every single TTK entry widget will bind to the right enter key on the keyboard and it's gonna run this method, regardless of which TTK entry widget it is. So I'm just gonna run this to make sure it works. So I'm gonna press the right enter key on the keyboard. Yep, it works, right enter key was pressed, so it registered it. So how do we know what the names of the classes are? Well, the widgets have a method called winfo underscore class. And if you run this, it'll tell you what the name of the class is. So I'm just gonna print this out to see what this gives us for the entry widget. You can see here it's T entry. For a classic entry widget, you know, just a TK entry widget, not TTK, it would be different. That would be tk.entry dot winfo underscore class. Let's see what that gives us. It's just entry without the T in the beginning. So this is how you could find out what the name of a class is for, for a particular type of widget is by running the winfo underscore class method on that widget. So there is another type of binding where you can bind every single type of widget to a specific type of action. And that one is bind underscore all. And here we don't have to specify the class name anymore because it's going to apply to all classes, all types of widgets. And now, regardless of which widget has focus, it's going to run this method. So let's just try it and see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to select the submit button so we can see that the submit button has focus now. The TTK entry widget no longer has focus and I'm gonna press the right enter key on the keyboard and we can see that it still works. And that's because we binded all the widgets uh, to this action and it's gonna run this method. 
So bind all is useful if you want to do something that applies to all widgets in your project. So for example, if you press the F1 key on your keyboard, it might bring up a help system. In a case like that, you don't really want to bind to a specific widget typically. Um, or maybe the print screen button. If you want to use the print screen button in your application, you can bind all. So it applies to all widgets. So you can also remove bindings as well. So you can, for example, say unbind. There's unbind all and unbind class. So you can bind, um, but there's also unbind methods as well that, that work uh, pretty much the same way. We saw how event binding works in TKinter. We looked at the methods bind, bind class, and bind all. Until the next tutorial, thanks for watching.